Gender equality is a fundamental human right, and women's and girls' empowerment is essential for the well-being and the well-functioning of our societies. Unfortunately, gender inequality persists worldwide, depriving women and girls of their basic rights and opportunities. SDG 5 aims at achieving gender equality and empowerment for all women and girls. Gender inequality manifests itself in different ways in the form of violence against women and girls, unequal economic empowerment and skills development, uh, inequality in leadership. Let me give you a few figures related to gender inequality. It is one in five women and girls aged 15 to 49 who reported experiencing physical and or sexual violence by an intimate partner within a 12-month period. In the most extreme cases, such violence can lead to death. Globally, over 750 million women and girls alive today were married before the 18th birthday. At least 200 million girls and women worldwide have undergone female genital mutilations. Men are more likely than women to obtain stable employment and find formal work. The average of time spent on unpaid domestic and care work is more than threefold higher for women than men. Only 22.8% of all national parliamentarians were women as of June 2016, a slow increase from 11.3% in 1995. Uh, at this current pace, it will take another 40 years to reach equal representation. Women are still underrepresented in managerial positions. Less than a third of senior and middle management positions are held by women. In the least developed countries, barely 60% of girls complete primary school and just 30% enroll in secondary school. To, f uh, to fight gender inequality, um, six targets have been defined and all forms of discrimination against all women and girls everywhere, eliminate all forms of violence against all women and girls, including trafficking and sexual and other types of exploitation, eliminate all harmful practices such as child early or forced marriages and female genital mutilations, recognize and value uh, unpaid care and domestic work, ensure women's and full and effective participation and equal opportunities for leadership at all levels of decision-making in political, economic, and public life, and ensure universal access to sexual and reproductive health and reproductive rights. Empowering women and girls and achieving gender equality requires the concerted effort of all stakeholders, including business. As the engine of 90% of jobs, technological innovation, capital creation and investment, Responsible business is critical to the advancement of women's and girls' empowerment around the world. Here are some examples of what business can do. The business can assure sufficient participation of women in decision-making and governance at all levels across all business areas. The business can pay equal remuneration, including benefits for work and equal value, of equal value support access to child and dependent care for, by providing sorry, services, resources and information to both women and men, establish a zero tolerance policy towards all forms of violence at work, including verbal and or physical abuses and prevent sexual harassment. It is a great pleasure to have with us Christine Nashberger, professor at Audencia Business School in France, to talk about the SDG 5 and gender equality. Christine, welcome. So Christine, you are a professor of management and human resources. You have worked quite extensively on questions around diversity and equality, disability, and also LGBT. Building from your wealth of research and knowledge and experience on those topics, could you tell us why do we need today an SDG and gender equality? First of all, Celine, uh, let me thank you for uh, this invitation. I'm very happy to uh, share my experience with you and, of course, also with the audience. 
Um, why do we need an SDG gender focus? Uh, I would say the answer is very simple because in many areas of our daily life, you know, women are still struggling and they're facing problems. For example, women are underrepresented in the media. Women have difficulties uh, to achieve, for example, also work-life balance. Women's voices are often not heard. Women are facing domestic violence. Women are often also, they have more difficulties, for example, also to access uh, health care. So the list can be very long. And I think today it's really urgent, in fact, to make progress in uh, many areas. And today's decision makers, they should really be aware of all these difficulties. And um, so the SDG 5 is really there to uh, achieve gender equality and to empower all women and girls. Thank you. So if we focus, we look at uh, gender equality at the workplace, where do we find gender inequality and how does it manifest itself? Um, gender inequality in the workplace uh, is in fact uh, in many different, we can observe it in many different areas. You know, for example, if we take um, what we call the employee experience, it's starting from if someone is uh, joining an organization, so the, the rec recruitment process, until the end. So, uh, for example, if you are laid off or if you are uh, deciding to leave, in fact, an organization. So, for example, uh, women, when they are in a job interview, they often face illegal questions. You know, for example, if you don't have any children, the recruiter may ask you, um, are you intending to have a family and so on. Women are also uh, facing the famous glass ceiling or uh, we call it also the labyrinth of leadership, you know, to access, uh, in fact, leadership uh, roles in organizations. Women are also uh, facing sexual harassment in the workplace. Sexism is also ambivalent in many workplaces. Pay, of course, mm -hmm. you know, there is still this gender pay gap uh, for the same positions. Um, yeah, the, here again, you know, the list can also be very long. So there are many things that should be undertaken. So it addresses, I mean, we see gender inequality in different areas, in the structure, in the pay, in the, in the leadership positions. So but, uh, what actually do companies to address those concerns if they do anything? So what are they actually doing? It's very much depending on the size of an organization, but also on the industry. For example, a big company like uh, Accenture, they have implemented a mentoring program for women uh, already more than 10 years ago. And this program shows uh, really very positive results nowadays. So it's much easier nowadays for um, women uh, to get leadership positions inside Accenture. Another example would also be um, the NIGO training that had been put into place uh, in our business school. Um, NIGO training meaning negotiation, so it's helping women to negotiate in fact their salary because uh, of this existing uh, gender pay gap. Uh, another example is also um, the, a company called Manitou Group, so they have implemented a women's network uh, a couple of years ago. At the beginning, it was very restrictive, so only women could uh, uh, yeah, be part of this uh, network. But then they have also extended it, and now it's open for uh, men and for women. Um, so networking is really a very important part, and this brings me also to one of my uh, main research results, which shows that women have often more difficulties to network, already because of the word work that is in networking. And I also found out that um, it is, um, you know, that women are also networking in a less strategic way than men. What I'm trying to say is that uh, men are focused and career oriented when they are networking. And for women, there is more the social dimension. So they really would like to exchange with other women. Okay, uh, how do you uh, organize your day? So it's much also about, uh, let's say, work-life balance. And another example also of one of my uh, research is that um, we often believe that uh, only women are concerned with uh, work-life balance. But um, I found out in a very particular study that also men are concerned. So there is really uh, um, this uh, concern not only for women, but also for men, because we always think uh, in terms of career, uh, that is all about work-life balance as well. And of course, there is a question of the sector as well. In more male-dominated areas, like, for example, the construction industry, it's much more difficult also for women, in fact, to advance and to achieve uh, equality.
Mm. So we see that companies are doing many initiatives, but actually what additional help need companies to achieve gender equality? I would say um, the legal framework, because of course, uh, you know, women and men, of course, need to be protected. You know, there is this so-called motherhood penalty, so women are often discriminated because of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing is as well to encourage companies uh, yeah, to put into place voluntary actions. So, for example, um, companies can have a, a label. So one of the labels would be the CSR label Lucy. Um, there can be also another label like a uh, great place to work. So it's really to have uh, a distinction that uh, may be part of uh, employer branding or other certificates. So it's really what makes you unique and uh, how you can attract finally and retain, of course, uh, female talents. Mm -hmm. So some incentives and some ways to recognize what is being done. So how, how do you see it evolve in the coming years? Is it going to change? That's really a good question. You know, I think there, there are really three main issues. You know, I think there should be really a change in organizational cultures because still uh, many organizations are run by men for men. You know, um, uh, and also in many organizations we have this 24-7 work culture, meaning that uh, you, know, you should be performing all the time. And this is, this is of course, very difficult uh, you know, to get really work-life balance. So there should be a development of organizational cultures. The second thing are really also um, uh, gendered uh, stereotypes and also roles in our society. So from the early beginning on, you know, children are really, uh, yeah, they acquire, you know, stereotypes. And then we are trapped in these gendered roles and often we interiorize them as well. So we feel it's natural, you know, women go more into communication, into HR and so on. And the last thing uh, I think which is also very important is really this elimination of the pay gap because uh, I think it's not normal in 2018 um, to get less money, you know, if you are a woman for the same job. So this is really uh, something we should fix. Mm -hmm. Maybe to close our discussion, why actually students should care about gender diversity? Why is it important for them? Because, in fact, today's students are tomorrow tomorrow's decision makers and they are going out and they are shaping of course organizational cultures they are the CEOs uh, you know of the future so I think they need to have this awareness that there is still uh, some progress to make and we are all I think also responsible for gender equality and we are all the winners you know if we have a more equal world so for example men would probably also uh, struggle less in terms of uh, work-life balance or they will also perceive less less stress because they are not the only uh, you know uh, breadwinner uh, men could also take some more time off so uh, they won't be uh, stereotyped also if they uh, if they do so and of course men on the other side they should also share power mm -hmm. because if women are accessing leadership positions, that's also something we need to take into account. So I would really say everyone should benefit and everyone has an important role to play. Uh, so SDG 5 should really become true one day if we really, if we are all into gender equality and um, we should really foster this. Christine, thank you very much for sharing insights with us on SDG 5. Thank you. Thank you for having invited me.